Uh, Dota for me has obviously been a, a big part of my life because I've been playing it for so long now and so many, so many hours a day for so much, so many years. And uh, I think it's just natural that when you spend so much time, it's, it's really nice that you can invest it into something that actually gives you something back. So I was able to turn it into a career. It wasn't really planned for me at all that it was going to be a career. I was just playing because I enjoyed it and it was fun. Uh, so now it's kind of become like a hobby combined with, with my job, which is like ideal, I think, for anyone to have that. Uh, my name is Andreas, also known as Crit. I uh, play for EG Dota 2 team and I play position 4. Uh, I've been playing for EG for almost four years now. So I got into Dota, I think it was around third grade or something. I must have been like nine or ten years old uh, when my cousin showed me it was custom game in Warcraft 3 back then. And uh, he basically just showed me because we, we used to play a lot of different custom games and then he showed me this new one and it ended up being Dota and then I was just hooked from there. It took over pretty fast and I played casual for a while but, but it turned into pro. I had a long time in the tier 2 scene um, where I didn't really think about going pro. Uh, I was basically just playing with Danish players and like playing very casually, especially before I went to high school. Uh, so I had maybe five years uh, right before high school and in high school where I was not really considering going pro. I was just playing playing to to get like a little bit of, of money in the weekend to go to parties and, and stuff like that, but didn't really consider going pro. And then after high school, I, I got an offer from, from OG and it, it, was, it was pretty easy for me to say yes to because I had like a year uh, after, you know, after high school, I wanted to basically just take a break year and work. So it just fit in perfectly that, that I had a chance to go pro there. And, and I was lucky enough that OG was a pretty quick success. I think uh, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm qualified to teach about position four is that I've not only played position four for a long time now, but I've also played different roles. I've been the captain of a team. So I understand the thought process behind the draft a little bit better. I understand like how do you have a synergy between your supports? Uh, I've also played at a high level for a long time now. I, I kind of started out in OG and it was it was pretty high level from the start. Uh, and, and ever since then I've been competing at the highest level. So I think that makes me pretty qualified to, to be able to give at least something back in that regard. Uh, in this course, uh, we're going to be touching at, at everything about position four from the draft uh, all the way until the late game. So we're going to be talking about how do you pick your hero? Uh, how many heroes are you going to have? Uh, how many hero heroes are you going to see before you get to pick your own hero? Can you really respond to it? Um, then you're going to go into laning uh, the, all the way from the start. Like, how do you get your wards out early? Um, you go into the post laning stage. What do you need to do to get online? Do you need levels? Do you need gold? Uh, after that, we're going to be talking about positioning and team fight. Uh, how do you help your team make sure that your course can farm and play around the right timings? And then in the late game, how do you really take these team fights? Like what items are going to impact your hero and change the way your hero has to be played? Uh, during this course, I expect you as a student to learn more about the thought process behind picking your hero as a position four. Uh, you will learn more about what do you do at the start of the game? How does that have an impact on your laning? Uh, how do you transition out of lanes and so forth, all the way to, to the late game team fights. Then I expect you to understand that each of these episodes is going to be a separate thing. Uh, take it one step at a time and make sure you understand what you're watching and, and take it in and try to apply it in games and then move on once you understand it and not try to watch all the videos and apply it all at once. I don't expect you to learn it straight away from watching these episodes. Some of them you might even have to revisit, but try to take it one step at a time and try to apply it. And then it will take time to learn. It all comes with experience, but try to use these as a stepping stone towards becoming better. To get the most out of this course, uh, I recommend that you don't watch episodes too fast. You take your time with each of them and, and try to learn each aspect on its own. Try to apply it before you rush on to the next one.